Okay, now this is the screen we're gonna be met with when we first turn the truck on, so we are on the home screen. Now, if for whatever reason you're on any other screen, you need to get back home, all we're gonna do at the very top, we're just gonna press the home icon. Perfect, okay, so as you can see here, we've got a little bit of a summary of what's going on inside of the truck. So we've got the navigation built in, which is going to be standard in the Lariat model and above. We've got whatever station's currently playing. If our phone was connected, it would show what song is currently playing. Moving down, we've got the ability to add a phone. We're gonna be doing that in just a second. And we can turn the heated steering wheel on or off from the screen. Moving down into audio. So tons of things here. We've got our sources. We can change between AM, FM, Sirius, and Bluetooth. If our phone was connected, it would show up there also. Moving back, we can direct tune. So we can tune to a different station a few different ways. We can direct tune here. There's a tuning knob down this way. And we've also got the ability to use a screen, or we can use the voice button on our steering wheel in order to do that as well. So all we're gonna do is select whatever station we wanna tune to and enter. And as you can see, it's changed the station. In order to save a station as a preset, all we're gonna do is change to whatever station we wanna save. We're just gonna press and hold and it's going to save that preset for us. So very, very straightforward. Moving into our climate settings. So a couple things to look at. We do have some settings. If we move down just a little bit, so you can see we've got some settings down here, but we've got the majority of the settings up, up in the console screen. So auto is automatically going to let the vehicle determine what the cabin temperature should be. When we get into the menu that gives us our max AC, we can turn the heated steering wheel on or off from here. And we've also got the ability to go max windshield defrost. Moving over, we can turn the system on or off. And we've also got this dual button here. So dual means we're in dual zone climate control. So I'm just going to adjust the driver or the passenger side. So you can see there's a difference between the driver and passenger, but it's always going to default to the driver if we want to get rid of dual. All we're going to do, Press that dual button, as you can see, it's taken the driver's side setting. Moving across, this is going to blow the air conditioning or the heat to our windshield, to our face, or to our feet. We've got our fan control setting on the screen, and we can also use the fan control setting moving down a little bit. This is gonna be our air circulation button. So with the air circulation button turned on, it's going to, so it's off right now, which means it's going to pull air from outside the truck inside. With the circulation button on, it's going to circulate air throughout the cabin instead. This is gonna be our rear window defroster. And then we've got our air conditioning button, air conditioning on or off. When it comes to phone, so as you can see, we don't have a phone connected. It's very straightforward to do that. So I'm just gonna show you here. All we're gonna do, so pull out your cell phone, add phone. Search for your vehicle on your device and select it once it is found. Okay, so, oh, there we go, nice and quick, right at the very bottom here. So Ford F-150 is shown up. All we're gonna do, click on that. Confirm that the pin displayed on sync matches the pin displayed on your device. And as you can see, the pins match up, 807111, perfect. And we're gonna hit yes and pair. For your safety, please stay alert to changing road conditions and use Sync's voice activated features while your vehicle is in motion. And that's it. So it's really that simple. So last one's gonna come up on the screen. Do you wanna allow contacts and favorites to sync? Absolutely, we wanna do that. And the phone is now connected. So a couple things to point out on the screen. We've got 911 assist. With 911 assist turned on, it's automatically going to dial 911 for us if the vehicle senses that we're in an accident. So I do recommend turning that one on, making sure that your phone's connected to the vehicle every time you hop in. Automatic contact download. If there's ever a change to our contacts, it'll automatically update that for us. As you can see, we've got all of my phone, my contacts are here. We've got my keypad. We can go text messages. We'll get Siri involved in this as well. So my phone is fully connected. So one thing to point out, if we go to our app screen, LiveX Live is now shown up. So that's an app that's on my phone. It's a radio app. You could also use Spotify, things like that. And you've got the ability to control that. So we can enable certain apps directly through the center console. Really, really neat. So it's gonna play off of LiveX Live instead. So we can control it on our center console screen rather than using the app. So really, really neat that the vehicle does that. Now playing Station Foo Fighters Radio. Why, thank you. Now, in order to be able to remove a phone. So there actually, before we do that, there are some things, mobile apps that'll work. Some of them you have to be plugged in on. Some of them you can just do over Bluetooth. Waze is one of the apps that you can use through the center console screen. Really, really nice that it's got the capabilities to do that. 
So we've got our phone settings. Now we can view all devices that are connected. So if, you, if we have multiple devices, it would show up, manage contacts, text messages, etc. In order to remove a device, we're just going to go to our devices there, move into my phone. We can either disconnect or fully remove. So if we hit remove and yes, as you can see, it's completely removed my phone from the vehicle. Jumping back in here, my phone's no longer connected. So it's really that simple. Moving into navigation. So as I mentioned, navigation is going to come standard on the F-150 Lariat. It's going to be built in. So a couple ways that that works. So navigation, we're just going to hit the search button at the top there. And all we're gonna do is start typing in the address that you wanna to go to. Now, one of the things I recommend is pause every now and again because it will auto-complete and come up with the address for you. Just gonna press the address there. Perfect, now we can save it as a favorite by pressing the star icon or we can hit start in order to navigate to that destination point. Obey traffic laws, be alert and use voice commands while driving. Please proceed to the highlighted route and then the route guidance will start. There we go, so very, very straightforward. In order to be able to cancel out an existing route, we're just gonna press this X button at the top, cancel route, yes. And there we go. Moving our controls back up, we can now jump into our menu, which is going to give us a ton of options. So we've got basic navigation settings. So we've got our screen view traffic list, our navigation settings. Gives us a few different options. So map preferences. Do we want it to be 3D the way that it looks right now? Do we want our point of interest icon showing? So that would be things like gas stations or coffee shops, etc. Do you want those showing up in the maps? Yes or no? When it comes to route preferences, it's what route do you prefer? Do you prefer the fastest, the shortest, the most eco-friendly route? Moving down, what don't you like when you're driving? Do you not like freeways? Do you want to avoid toll roads like the 407 and other roads? So you've got the ability to select that here. With your route preferences, it's going to create a map for you and a, a route for you based off of whatever preferences you've got. Lastly, navigation preferences are gonna be our prompts. So as we come up to an upcoming turn, what happens? I oh, guess it helps if I press the button. So do we get our voice and tones? Do we get voice only or do we get tones only? Really again, matter of personal preference there. That's going to be it for our navigation settings. We've got the ability to look at any previously done addresses, so we can look at our addresses there. We can delete all of them also. Very straightforward. Moving into our home and work now. So if we have our home and work addresses set up, we can press the voice command button on the steering wheel, and that's automatically going to navigate us to home or work if we've got those addresses saved. So it's a really, really useful feature to just have. Moving into our settings. Sound settings are gonna give us things like treble, mid-range, bass, so we've got the ability to modify those. Jumping back, we've got our clock settings. So as a default, it's going to be in our 12-hour time. If you prefer the military, so the 24-hour time mode, we've got the ability to do that by pressing that button. We can adjust one hour or one minute at a time and jump between AM and PM. Auto daylight, daylight savings time is automatically going to flip us into an hour forward or an hour back, depending on the time of year. When it comes to auto time zone update, it's automatically going to update the clock in the vehicle depending on the time zone, and that's based off of the GPS. So if you're heading to the west coast or to the east coast and the time zone's gonna change, you don't have to manually go in and update the time, it'll do it for you. Bluetooth, very straightforward. We can turn the Bluetooth off completely, or we can add a device in, whether that's a cell phone or a Bluetooth-enabled MP3 player. Jumping back, phone, we've already been there. That's where we would go to add phones, delete them, etc. Radio gives us a few other options. So our radio text is what shows up when we are on a, we're on a radio station. So this is our radio text. Whether or not that shows up is a matter of personal preference. Number of preset pages. As a default, it's by two, so we can go up to five additional pages, or five total pages, I should say. It's gonna just take a second to update, there we go. So as you can see here, we can now have up to 30 presets, whereas by default, it would have been 10, 10 presets. And you can change between AM, FM, Sirius, XM, etc. on the preset page down there. Navigation, we've already been in those nav settings, so the map preferences, route preferences, etc. Jumping across, we've got our general settings. Looking into general settings for a second, we can change our language, so English, Spanish, or French. Temperature units, Celsius, Fahrenheit, etc. Whether or not this beep happens. 
So that's a matter of preference. We can get rid of the beat by pressing that button. I do recommend turning the automatic system updates on. That's automatically going to update the software and the firmware on the vehicle for you. Now, a couple things to note, in the 2020 F-150, the navigation will not update automatically over the air. You have to either get the shop to do it when the vehicle is serviced, or when you're at home, you can download the newest map release and you can automatically do it by inserting a USB stick into the vehicle. Now, as I mentioned, the 2020 F-150 doesn't have the capability to update wirelessly but the 2021 does. So if you're not really sure, if you're looking at the 2020 versus 2021, there is some great tech that's coming out in the 2021 model. Look at the video that's gonna show up on screen here to learn a little bit more. Oh. Okay, a couple other things to point out. Automatic updates, as I mentioned, I do recommend turning that one on. And in order to do that, make sure that your vehicle is also connected to Wi-Fi at home. Ford Pass Connect, the vehicle does have a built-in modem and we can use it as a wireless hotspot for up to 10 devices. All we're gonna do, vehicle hotspot, we're gonna turn it on and you just have to be connected to a data plan. In Canada, it's gonna be on the Bell Network. Jumping into some basic vehicle settings. Nothing overly important or exciting in here. We can change the color of the ambient light inside the vehicle. We can change the door keypad code. It's gonna be a five digit factory combination as a default. That one's always going to be there. And then we can add in multiple other codes if we need to. Voice control, three options. We've got our advanced mode, phone confirmation, and our voice command list. So I want you to listen up for a second. Tune to 97.7. Tuning to FM 97.7. So as you heard, we got a confirmation after we changed the radio station. But if we turn advanced mode on, that gets rid of a lot of those notifications that we get. So let's change it again. Tune to 94.9. All right, so as you, can, as you heard, we didn't get that confirmation, but as you can see, it did change the station for us. So voice control with our advanced mode on, we just won't get as many prompts, so that's a personal preference of mine. Phone confirmation, when we make a phone call, will it confirm the person we're dialing? Yes, make sure you do that. Voice command list is going to be this list that comes up. Whether or not that one comes up or not is really, again, going to be a matter of personal preference. Valet mode, with valet mode enabled, it's essentially going to lock the screen out. You enter in a four digit pin, and done. One, two, three, four. Please don't use zero, 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 or one, two, three, four. Okay, there we go. So as you can see here, so we've entered that pin and it's now locked the screen out. So I can't do anything, even if I turn the vehicle on and back off again, this screen is locked out. In order to be able to unlock it, I need to re-enter that four digit pin and it's unlocked it from valet mode for us.